Okay, I previously did a video on frog function. And uh, this morning I got on Facebook and, oh, there's a brand new shoe. And this guy is given trimming instructions. And his instructions that you are that you trim the heels back, clear back here to the back of the collateral grooves right there. Now, a lot of times where this exit is depends on how much frog you have. You could have two inches of heel. And you could trim the heel back to here if the frog was up to here, and it makes it look like the exit of the collateral groove is up to here. Or if you had no frog, you could trim the heels down to here um, because that's the way it makes it look. Now, frog function is like this. The frog grows. Okay. This frog stay here. Big, thick frog stay is what you have to have to have proper foot function. It grows between the bulbs right here. And what it does is when the pastern descends, it descends on the digital cushion, and, it, and all that is compressed, and it hits immediately onto your frog stay right here. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you how that works with this. Okay, I've put it on this book so I can kind of get it up in the air so you can see it. Okay, just a second. Put that there. Okay, so again, here, look at that frog stay. See, it's pretty good sized. They're not all that big if the horse doesn't, if the horse's heels collapse or if the horse's heels are trimmed out, you will not have this. Okay, that's how it works. When the pastern descends, it descends onto the digital cushion, and then onto the frog stay, and that's how it works. And it's good that the, there is some room down here for it to give a little bit. You see that? That way, if you have heels, a little bit of heel, it not only allows for you to have soul in the heel, um, it allows for the frog corium to have room. Let me show you here. You have to have some soul in your heel here. This is the true heel of the horse right here. See, right here is the true heel. And you have to have soul in your heel, coming beyond that heel. And then that frog stay, and that foot up off the ground, about that far. Then when that pastern descends, again, what's it do? It loads onto the digital cushion, which is all in here, and it's being compressed and held up by the frog stay. Okay, now if you cut your heels out to where these people are telling you to cut them out, which is taking them back. They say, oh, you take them back. Clear to the exit of the collateral groove. Some people will measure it. One and one-eighth inch right there. Right to what they think is the end of the periopal. What they don't realize is that not only is the bulb skin periopal, does it end basically at, it tells you where it should end at the end of the foot here. If you can tell the difference between periopal and frog skin, because... Once the frog starts to really grow in, um, the frog skin can start to hook to the sides of the heels like that and grow all the way down. So a person has to be able to tell the difference between what is bulb skin, what may be stretched bulb skin, and if they really have any depth or thickness of frog at all. See, your frog has to grow from this frog corium right here. If you take the heels back, or which... Because, uh-oh, I'm missing a light bulb. There we go. Okay, if you take the heels, because the wall grows down and forward, they're telling you to trim the heels back, like this. And it, that takes them down and back further this way. But if you're, it, you know, there's a lot of mechanical stuff going on here, and also hoof distortion, you know, uh... <sighs> See, I'm a little disgusted because I just found this guy with the new horse 
uh, shoe claiming to fix all. And he's telling people, like they all do, to take these heels down to wherever your frog is. Well, what if you don't have any frog? What if you've had thrush? See, what they're doing then is taking the heel clear down to here. If I was to follow his directions, I would be taking my heels off clear to here. Now, what would that do? First of all, she has uniform sole thickness all the way around in this hoof capsule right here. Let's put this in here. Right there, she has uniform sole thickness. And when this pastern descends, already not fitting in here, right? When this pastern descends, let me see. Get this here. When it descends, it hits this frog stay, and then because they're, the horse is bigger, has more weight, okay, the heel spread a little bit, tiny bit, and this frog stay can descend and have room to descend to the ground, okay? Now, if I can get it back off. Oh, Hannah. getting harder to get back off okay okay so just a second my hand okay so what they want you to do is uh, they want you to take the heels down like that and then put it on a shoe but not a shoe like this this is a ground control shoe and it has frog support if you have this, you have some frog support. If you have an open shoe, you have no frog support. Now, notice that she's got some room in the heel and the frog descends. Now, it's true that she could have a little bit more frog, but she's still got a perfectly functional good frog. Better to have a little less here and a little more in here. See? So that there's a little room. For that foot to work correctly. Okay, now, what happens if I put the, if I use a shoe, a composite shoe with frog support, that horse still has room to move and she's got support right here. Okay, but what if, let's just use a normal shoe. Okay, what then happens? It has to go way down too far. See that? There's nothing stopping it at the ground. Okay, now, notice the difference in the thickness of these shoes. Composite shoes are always thicker. What if I'm using a composite shoe with no... Let's see. There's nothing. See? Let's get this clear. We're here. There's no support at all. At all. That horse is going to ruin his foot. See there? Okay, now, here's the thing. They want you, I'm looking at this page here, okay, and they say this is the divine design. See, that's not science. When they start telling you to use the golden mean or the golden ratio, that is um, what you call sacred geometry. That is not science. They're trying to pawn it off as science. Not science, and it is not anatomy, Okay. Yeah, this guy says, by using nature's golden ratio, you can determine the correct angle for a specific horse as determined by the golden ratio or divine proportion. That is religion. That is not science and anatomy. Okay, um, let's see. What's he say about 
heels. Cripes. I'm trying to find it. Okay. Trim the heel to the baseline. Baseline. See, this guy uh, must have been listening to Cheryl Henderson. Um, all this stuff. Sacred geometry. Okay, trim the heel to the baseline where it joins the bar at the V. Trim the baseline where it joins the bar at the V. That I would be taking this much heel off of her. Okay? See the V? See that collateral groove exit? Right here, the V. Right here. See? Strasser, one and one eighth inch. Only she uses centimeters since it's over in Germany. Henderson, one and one eighth inch, or to the end of these little periopal flaps over here. Let me show you. See, put my measurement right at one eight, one and eight, one and one eighth inch. See. This this horse has frog. If a horse don't have frog, this period this moves here. One and one eighth inch. See, you might start your horse might start and actually have some frog. If the frog was clear up to here, look how much further ahead the you'd be trimming the heels back, but also you'd still have width. You see that? Well then if your frog moves or diminishes, which it's going to with this method, then eventually you're trimming clear down to here because you're trimming down and back. See, you're trimming depending on frog height, actually. And people can't always tell how much frog a horse has. But what I want to show you is, see, this is what we should be trimming to, trimming the capsule to fit this foot here. Okay, I want to show you the length of the heel. From the hairline to the very end of the heel is one and one eighth inch. Let's see. Let's move that a bit. See if I can show you. There's the hairline. There's the end of the heel. One and one eighth inch. Let me get it up here. That's what you're trimming the frog down to. Right there. Okay? Now let's look at the inside of the capsule because you got two measurements here, right? You got an external and an internal. Okay, now that heel fits right here in this heel groove. But this can all be trimmed out and flattened, and you can wind up all the heel from here back. Let's see. From there back, this is all cartilage. These heels are composed of cartilage, not bone, and they can be crushed. Okay, so let's measure this in here. From the... Okay, let's move some stuff here. Okay. From where, okay, here's your seed of the corn here. There's your seed of the corn on the inside. From the bottom of the seed of the corn, measuring up the heel to the hairline is exactly one and one eighth inch. What, are you not supposed to have any sole? Huh? Trying to give it light on there. Okay, see, this fits on the heel here. What are her heels? Her heels are enough to give her to fully cover the back of her foot here. Her heel. This is her internal heel. Fully cover that. Plus give her about three-fourths to an inch to let her grow some sole in the heel. And to make it so she has is able to have sole. Let's see throughout the foot. See, do you want your horse to have sole? 
Okay, when you trim the heel buttress out, and you trim like these guys tell you, just take it back to the base of the frog, or to the baseline. See? Uh, every time you do that, you can over-lower your heels. You need to learn the anatomy of the heel. You need to learn how to trim this capsule and how to recognize when you've got heels, correct heels, and when you don't. It's not all about just, oh, just take it back to these little exits here because they can change. They can change. So again, proper function is that when this pastern descends, it descends into the digital cushion, which is from here to here, and then it hits this frog stay, and it hits the ground. See there? Just like that. Okay, if you don't, if you trim the heels down to what these people prescribe, just down to the, the V here, this is what you got. You got your horse on its bulbs with no support and no of the digital cushion and no frog stay. Eventually you trim the frog right out of the foot and your horse starts to break down and get all kinds of hoof diseases. Okay. Again, let's look at that. Again, on a regular shoe. Just a regular shoe with no frog support. The ground. See, it needs the ground. It needs a place where it kind of stops it a little bit. But there ain't nothing in a regular shoe. There isn't a ground control shoe. See? But there isn't in these composite shoes that are as thick as this. They're the worst. They're the worst. See? Even further. No support for the back of that horse's foot. Why do you think God made the ground? <laughs> you know, if you're going to believe in something, believe that things are the way they are for a purpose. Mechanically, structurally, natural laws. See, we go with tack trimming according to natural laws. Not some buddy's religious idea. You know, when they talk about the golden mean and sacred geometry, that's what they're talking about. That's religion. That is not science, and that is not anatomy. See there? Look what this frog does. 